Welcome to Inside Sound United. Today, I'm happy to discuss with you our Denon & Marantz AV receivers. With me today is Phil Jones to talk about these products and answer any of your questions. I'm now gonna hand it over to Phil. Hello everyone, it's Phil Jones from the Sound United brand activation team. And today we're here to talk about AV receivers. Sound United has two brands of AV receivers, Denon and Marantz. So today we're gonna to be talking about what is new for those lineups, as well as we're gonna introduce a new Denon model. Finally, we're gonna talk about what I get asked about a lot, which is HDMI 2.1. So let's get started. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the history of these two brands. Denon is Japan's first and oldest audio company, and it was founded in 1910. In fact, we actually hold the record for the longest continuously produced audio product. It's a phono cartridge called the DL-103, which is still handmade in Japan by two ladies in a small room. Denon is also has a rich heritage when it comes to the audio business. Um, our first product was actually a phonograph in 1910. We were the first to sell stereo records. We developed the, the moving coil cartridge, which is still used on turntables today. And we also helped develop PCM, which is the backbone of the compact disc. So as you can see, we have a huge heritage when it comes to digital technologies. Morantz was actually founded by Saul Morantz in his basement in 1951. He was a passionate audio enthusiast that was just dissatisfied with the sound he was getting from the current gear that was available on the market. Along the way, Morantz has produced some of the most successful and iconic home audio products in history, and we are still the leading hi-fi manufacturer across the globe. And their mission is better sounding, longer lasting, better looking products. You'll see that we have two brands, Denon and Morantz. And we get asked a lot because if you look at the boxes, if you look at the Morantz behind me and the Denon behind me, a lot of times, if you just look at the specs, you really don't get the full picture about what makes these brands special. If you look at the specs, you'll see between something like maybe an a SR8015 and a Marantz 6700, the specs are the same. How many channels, the wattage, um, all of the features. But when you pull the lid off of those products, that's where you start to see the differences. If you look at a receiver, all receivers, regardless of their price point, have to have a certain amount of functionality. There's people that want common things. Bluetooth, the ability to, to cast music from my phone, they want to switch HDMI, they want surround sound processing. All of those things are demanded by every customer, but that does not differentiate one brand from another. What separates a Denon from a Marantz is their audio circuitry. What's going on below that little board that shows all of the video switching and things like that. A Marantz product commands a premium over a Denon product. And that is for a couple of reasons. It is true that a Marantz AVR and a Denon AVR share about 57% of the same parts. But those parts are mainly, like I said, video boards, video switching, Bluetooth transmitters, and things like that. The audio components are different. For example, if we compare a Marantz SR8015 to a Denon X6700, you will see that the Marantz has 14% more parts compared to its competitive AVR that have the equivalent power and performance. And this is due to things such as HDAMs, which result in better sound. HDAM stands for hyperdynamic amplifier modules. Most receivers utilize what are called op amps. They're little transistors that are used to boost the signal. If you buy those types of op amps, which work really well, you can't really customize the sound. HDAMs are, instead of buying an op amp, you use individual components to fine tune the sound to get it the way you want. More parts means more money, which is one of the reasons why a Marantz product costs a premium. On top of that, not only are we using more parts, we're using higher quality parts, more expensive parts, because Marantz lives at a little bit of a higher price level. So for example, a Marantz AVR like the 8015 has a toroidal power supply. A toroidal power transformer um, costs about 330% more than the regular EL core ones that you will see in most AVRs. Now the benefit of a toroidal power supply is they can generate a huge amount of current but with minimal electromagnetic noise. So you get better sound with more current, but the piece is more costly. On top of that, things like the capacitors are custom made Elna capacitors, which cost 40% more than the capacitors you would see in most other receivers, um, and they provide higher capacity and better sound quality. 
So better parts, more parts is one of the reasons why a Marantz costs more. For example, if you look at an SR8015, the entire chassis is copper plated. All of the screws are copper plated. Copper does a really good job um, improving grounding and, and isolating all of the components from noise, but copper costs a whole lot more than steel. So even though the boxes are black, they're completely different on the inside. So to summarize, why does a Marantz command a premium over another receiver like a Denon? Well, the first thing, we talked about it, premium parts, more parts of higher grade. Toyota power supplies, audio grade capacitors, and even a copper chassis. Now, as a, as a user, you will notice that a Marantz and a Denon sound different. Which one is best is the one that you like. Denon and Marantz receivers are the only receivers that support all of the available immersive surround sound formats. And those include Dolby Atmos, DTSX, IMAX Enhanced, and Oral 3D. Which one is the best surround sound format? It's up to you. At Denon and Marantz, we are surround sound agnostic. Our goal is for you to be able to play back that disc or that streaming service and know that you're gonna get the best sound possible. I will note that as you move up the lineup, you will get more surround sound formats because some surround sound formats require more surround channels and more processing power, which is found in higher end models. One new surround sound format that we should talk about is DTSX Pro. And we are the first AVRs to support this format. DTSX Pro is an enhanced version of DTSX. So all of the content you already have in DTSX is now compatible with DTSX Pro. So what do you get with DTSX Pro? You get more processing power, which gives you more surround channels. The original DTSX was limited to 11 channels. With DTSX Pro, you can go beyond 30 channels. Now, our receivers, the 6700 and the 8015, can support up to 13 channels of surround sound processing in DTSX Pro if you have an external amplifier. DTSX Pro will also be supported on Denon's flagship receiver, the X8500, as well as Marantz's AV processors, including the AV8805 and the AV7706. Another notable thing I wanna point out is all Denon and Marantz receivers have heels built in, which we believe is the most robust wireless music system on the market today. We can support high-res audio distribution for up to 32 rooms or 32 zones. Heos is also built into a variety of other Cyanide products, including sound bars, network players, wireless speakers, and even custom integration focused multi-zone devices. So regardless of your customer's needs, if they want wireless music, Heos is the way to go. So let's talk a little bit about the Marantz AVRs. There are currently four SR series AVRs available in 2021. The SR5015, the SR6015, the SR7015, and the big boy behind me, the SR8015. As you move the lineup, you get more channels of amplification, a more powerful surround sound processor, and because of that, you also get the ability to utilize more surround sound formats. When we look at Denon, they have two series of products, the S series and the X series. The X series is a custom integration focused lineup of products that are found in custom integrators and specialty dealers. Previously, there were four models in the X series lineup in, for 2021. The 2700, the 3700, the 4700, and the 6700. And just like the Marantz units, as you move the lineup, you get more channels of amplification, you get a more powerful surround sound processor, and you get more surround sound formats that are supported. Today, I am happy to talk about a new model that we are just introducing, the Denon X1700H, which is this guy right here. This is the entry into the X-Series lineup, and it is packed with features, especially for its price point. So let's talk about the differences between the new X1700 versus the unit it's replacing, which is the X1600. The most notable thing is the fact that you have support of HDMI 2.1. And that includes, of course, 8K60 and 4K120 pass-through, but also all of the other great features that come with HDMI 2.1, including dynamic HDR, HDR10+, VRR, or variable refresh rate, quick media switching, quick frame transport, all the things that are gonna make your gaming and movie watching experience better. 
Not only does this actually accept 8K content, it also has the ability to upscale your HD content and your 4K content to 8K, which is pretty much a new item for a product in its price class. Another notable thing is this receiver has six HDMI inputs. Three of them actually support 8K content or 4K 120 at bandwidths up to 40 gigabits per second. So you have six inputs and one output, and three of those inputs actually support 8K. So you can have up to three 8K sources, which is absolutely amazing. It also has many of the other features that are found on the higher end models, whether it's dual speaker preset, so you can have a calibrated um, maybe daytime mode and nighttime mode. It has all of the HEOS capabilities and all of the things that you find on every X series receiver. So first let's talk about 8K, because I get asked about that a lot. 8K content and 4K high frame rate content requires more bandwidth, which meant that you needed a new HDMI standard, which is HDMI 2.1. This unit supports HDMI 2.1 at up to 40 gigabits per second. If you look at the back of the receiver, you will see the six HDMI inputs, and you will see that three of them are labeled 8K, and it has one monitor out. I will note that many of the other X-Series receivers may have a monitor A and B, as well as a second zone. Because of this unit's price point, it has one monitor output. Also, the older receivers, or the receivers that are currently in market, have a button on the remote control that is labeled 8K. On this receiver, the game, the AUX1, and the AUX2 are 8K inputs, so they don't need to be labeled. When it comes to HDMI 2.1, you can support 4K, 120, and 8K60 either compressed or uncompressed. If you want to support that video, those video formats, uncompressed, you need 40 gigabits per second. If ever you see a receiver that only supports 24 gigabits per second, it is actually supporting 8K60 and 4K 120, but they're using a version of compression. Now, we just got done talking about bandwidth, 40 gigabits per second. But if you're a geek out there, you know that ultra high speed HDMI 2.1 is supposed to have an, a bandwidth, a max bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second. Now, 48 is great, but do you really need 48? Most current consumer monitors use a 10-bit panel. And a 10-bit panel, if you maximize that 10-bit panel to give you 4K at 120 frames per second with all the color that that panel can support with the highest color sampling, the maximum that is needed for that panel is 40 gigabits per second. If you're a movie watcher looking at 8K content at 24 frames per second, the maximum that is needed is 40 gigabits per second. And if you're even watching 8K, the Olympics in 8K at 60 frames per second, guess what? On a 10-bit panel, all that is needed is 40 gigabits per second. To utilize 48 gigabits per channel, you would need a 12-bit panel, which is not utilized in any professional or consumer flat panel, whether it's an OLED, LCD, computer monitor, or even a projector. Having 48 gigabits of information is like telling your Volkswagen to go 200 miles an hour. It may know what you want it to do, but it can't do anything with the additional information. So 40 gigabits per second ensures you're gonna get the maximum performance from any display that is on the market today. On top of that, the game systems their outputs, the circuitry that are in the game systems, like the Xbox and the PlayStation, or your big bad NVIDIA graphics cards, have a maximum output of 40 gigabits per second. So you could take six graphics cards and build a, a, a gaming PC the size of a refrigerator and crank up all of the settings, and guess what's gonna come out of that, out of that gaming system? 40 gigabits per second. 40 gigabits per second is pretty much the limit right now to give you the maximum performance from all of your gear. And you know that if you use a Denon or Marantz receiver and you select 8K, you're gonna get every ounce of performance from your game system as well as your displays. The first HDMI 2.1 sources that have hit the market all are gaming based, including the Xbox Series X, the PlayStation 5, and the latest graphics cards from companies such as NVIDIA. The X1700 supports all of those consoles um, regardless of the brand. So for example, 
behind me, I have a brand new Xbox connected to a brand new X1700 and a LG television set that is an HDMI 2.1 display. If I go into the menu system and I can actually see that this game, the, the game system is actually being supported. So if I look here, you will see that it says 4K 120. So you can see that the Xbox has no problems passing 4K 120 in HDR through the receiver to this display. Now you can also utilize the receiver's remote control to get lots of additional information. So if I go to the settings menu or the setup menu and I go down to general and I go to information under video, there are two displays. The first one says HDMI signal. When I click that, you'll see 4K VRR. And people go, how come it doesn't say 4K 120? Because this game system and this game supports variable refresh rate, the refresh rate or the frame rate is changing. So it can do up to 120 frames per second, but because it's changing so rapidly, it is not going to give you a frame rate. But I can see that it supports VRR at, with HDR10 at 40 gigabits per second. If I want more information, I can, go back a, I can go back a menu and I can go into the HDMI monitor. This is basically looking at the source device to say what is it passing or what is it capable of passing to the display. And when I select that, you'll see that it can pass HDR10, Dolby Vision, HLG, and all the way up to 4K at 120 frames per second, no problem to this display as well as other um, enhanced HDMI features such as auto latency mode and VRR. So the nice thing about an X1700 is you know the second you take it out of the box, regardless of your game system, you are good to go. So the Denon X1700 supports 8K60 and 4K120 from all of the latest HDMI 2.1 enabled gaming consoles and graphics cards. But you may have a older Denon & Marantz HDMI enabled receiver that is experiencing issues with select HDMI 2.1 sources. Don't worry, we have a solution. It is called the SPK618 HDMI adapter. This adapter fits in line between the gaming console and the receiver, and it fixes any communication issues between those two devices. Setup is incredibly easy. In the box with the adapter comes an additional HDMI cable. And basically you plug the game system into the adapter, and then the adapter's output into your receiver's AK input. There's even a little power adapter to drive it. Once you do that, you will have no problems with any HDMI 2.1 enabled gaming console. Now, people ask all the time, why an adapter instead of something like maybe a firmware update or maybe me shipping my receiver back? We looked at it and if you think about it, this is the least impact to you as a customer or you as a dealer. Instead of the receiver having to come out and be shipped all the way across country to have the board swapped or even, or even have the unit replaced, it takes two minutes to put this box in line in any AV system. So you can quickly um, rectify the problem with minimal impact to the customer and to you as a dealer. So let's see if this is actually working. So right here I have an Xbox Series X connected through an SPK618 to an older Marantz SR8015. And if I go into the game systems menu system, and I go down the settings, and I go down to TV options, I can see that 4K 120 is now supported. Now what I want you to notice is it says your TV does not support Dolby Vision. The TV we had connected to the X1700 did, and you would see that that was highlighted. Now, there's two ways to check this, if this is compatible or, or see what's going on between your TV, your source, and your receiver. The first way is to look at this menu system. The other way would be if you go into the receiver's 
Setup menu. And you go to General. And you go into Information. Under Video, you'll see one called HDMI Monitor 1. That is the output that is being sent to the display. The, since the receiver is in between the source, which is the game system, and the display, it can monitor what is being passed back and forth. When I go into this, you'll see that this display supports HDR10, HLG, and HDR10+, Plus, not Dolby Vision. And you'll see that it supports 4K up to 120 frames per second, as well as um, auto low latency mode. But this one does not support VRR, which the display that we showed you with the 1700 did. So this display will show you what is being sent from the gaming console to the TV. So it's really quick to see what's going on and how well the system is working together. So as you can see, the SPK618 adapter quickly solves any issues you will have. Most Denon Emirates HDMI 2.1 enabled receivers have one 8K um, HDMI 2.1 input that supports 4K 120 and 8K 60, which is enough for most customers and most people out there because most of us only have one game system that supports it. But what if you're that maniac out there or hyper gamer that has a PlayStation, an Xbox, and maybe a gaming PC? Yes, I think there's probably three of you out there in the world. We still have a solution for you. We are introducing two three-in, one-out, 8K video switchers the Marantz VS3003 and the Denon AVS3. Using this little box here, you can add three HDMI 2.1 sources to your Denon or Marantz AVR. Very, very simple. On the back of the unit, you'll see that there's three inputs where you can plug in your three HDMI 2.1 enabled sources. So 8K60 or 4K 120. Then there is an output from the back of the box that goes into your receiver's 8K input. And the nice thing about this box is your Denon and Marantz receivers can have up to eight HDMI inputs, one of them being HDMI 2.1, such as the 6700 that's sitting there. The second I add this box, now I have 10 HDMI inputs, depending on how it's configured. So now I have three HDMI 2.1 inputs and seven HDMI 2.0B inputs. And if you need more than that, I need to come to your house because you have more, way more electronics than what I do, all right? So let's quickly talk about what, how, what's, what this, what is going on with this box. So of course, in the back, you'll have your three inputs and your one output. You also have to power it using a, um, a five volt output. It comes with a little power adapter or you can use any cell phone power adapter to drive this unit. There's also an IR input on it because if you have a control system, this has discrete IR codes so you can switch between the inputs that are connected in here and add it to your macros on your custom integration system. Along the side, you'll see that there's actually th two switches. One is for AVR control, and one is for HDMI control, which we will talk about in a second when we talk about how to connect this. So behind me, you can see that I actually have a PlayStation 5, a high-end gaming PC, and a 8K, um, an 8K um, 60 4K 120 test pattern generator. And I have all three of these connected to the, um, to the Denon X6700. So right now, we are looking at the gaming system. And if you look at the gaming system, you will see that the gaming system says um, 3840 by 2160, 4K, and it is variable, which is, means unlocked. Right now, what we're looking at is the gaming computer. So as you can see, we're playing Forza right now. And right now, the frame rate is unlocked, variable, VRR. So we're doing 4K in VRR. If I, I can also set it for, for 4K at 120 frames per second. So passing that um, game system, um, the gaming PC at 4K at 120 frames per second or VRR. Of course, that it depends on the game system 
and the game that you are playing. I also have a PlayStation 5 connected under the input number two. Now I could push the button on the box or I could use the, the remote control that is included. So if I hit HDMI number two or input number two, the unit will switch over to the PlayStation 5. So this is the PlayStation 5. If I go into the settings menu on the PlayStation 5 and I go down to screen video, you'll see that under video information that HDR is supported at 4K at 120 frames per second. So you can see no problems um, with the uh, gaming PC, no problems with the PlayStation 5. So in, on the third input, we actually have a test pattern generator. So when I hit input number three, the switcher will switch to the third input. And you is, will see that there's actually 4K video playing at 120 frames per second. You can see the car whiz through. So if you are a customer that happens to have three 4K 120 or 8K 60 HDMI um, enabled sources, you were good to go. The nice thing about this little box is peace of mind. You may not need it now. Enjoy your PlayStation, enjoy your Xbox, enjoy your gaming console. But in the future, if you decide you want to expand the capabilities of your current receiver, you just need to purchase this little box. As a benefit to the, for you as a customer, as a dealer, it extends the life of your products and it allows you to enjoy them for years to come. So now let's talk about how to connect and control this device because there's basically three ways that you can do it. So there's three ways that you can control the VS3003 or the Denon AVS3 um, 3N switcher. The first way is you can control it via HDMI CEC or Consumer Electronics Control. If you look on the side of the box, along the side, you will see a little switch that says HDMI control. When you click that switch, when it's connected, whenever the source is powered up, CEC will, will make the switch, switch to the proper input, as well as switch the receiver to the proper input automatically. So I come home and I turn on my PlayStation 5. This switch will automatically switch to input number one, or wherever the PlayStation 5 is connected, and the receiver will automatically switch to 8K. Simple. Then I decide I want to play my Xbox. I turn off my PlayStation. I turn on my Xbox. The switch will automatically switch to that input. Say it's HDMI number three on the box, and it will switch the receiver to 8K. This is all done automatically via HDMI CEC. And for many customers, this is the simplest way to do it. But many of you, out there are custom integrators and you don't like CEC. So there's some other ways you can actually control this box. You can actually use the remote control that is included with the switcher as well as the remote control that's included with your receiver. So you would just take your receiver's remote control and set the input to 8K. Then you would select one of the three 8K sources or 4K 120 sources connected to the switcher using one of the buttons that's on the remote control, one, two, or three. For those who have control systems, you can seamlessly integrate this because the inputs on the receiver and the inputs on the switcher all have discrete IR commands. So all you would have to do is when I wanna watch the PlayStation, in my macro, I would put in a command to switch the receiver to 8K, and then another command to switch to the proper input on the switcher. If you already have the control system set up for one device, which under the 8K input, you're literally only adding one more macro for the three inputs that are on the switcher. So it's really easy to quickly upgrade your client's control system and add those three sources and the customer gets a seamless experience. So say the customer does not have a control system and they don't want to use two remote controls to switch between the HDMI 2.1 sources. What can you do? Well, there's another switch on the side of the box and that switch says AVR control. When you click this on, then you could use the receiver's remote control to switch the inputs. The pros of that, one remote control. The cons, 
you do not have as many HDMI inputs as if you use two remotes. Remember, if you use two remote controls, you have seven HDMI 2.0B devices and three HDMI 2.1 devices. If you use a VR control, you will end up with a total of eight devices, so you'll lose two. But most customers, eight HDMI devices is more than enough, um, and they want the convenience of maybe just using one remote control. So let's talk about how you set that up. So say you're a customer and you don't want to use CEC and you don't want to use multiple remote controls, we also have a third solution for you and that's called AVR control. If you look on the side of the box, you'll see that there's a little switch that says AVR control. When you click that, you can use your receiver's remote control to control this switcher. Of course, once you click this, you're gonna reassign some of the source names that are on your receiver to the inputs of this switcher. So let me show you how that's done. So first thing you wanna do is switch on the AVR control. Then you want to go into the receiver's menu system. You wanna go down to video inputs and under there you'll see input assign. Currently, under input assign, the AK input is set to AK. Then I can go up to game and I can assign that input to 8K as well, as well as the media player. So now when I select media player, it will switch the switcher to input number three. When I select game, it'll switch it to input number two. And when I select 8K, it'll switch it to input number one. So by using the receiver's remote control, the customer will be able to easily switch between the three HDMI inputs on the 8K switcher. So as you can see, we have multiple ways that you can connect an HDMI 2.1 source to playback games or movie content in 4K20 or 8K60. However, a lot of times when you have a problem with HDMI, it has nothing to do with the black boxes, the display or the TV or the game system. A lot of times it has to do with your cables. And one thing that we have built into all of our Denon and Marantz AVRs is what is called HDMI Diagnostic. This feature is designed for custom integrators, which allows you to test your HDMI cables to make sure that they can pass the video signal properly. To utilize this test tool, there is a specific button press. And when you select that button press, it'll bring up this feature. Connect the HDMI cable to the AK input and the monitor one output of a receiver like a 6700. And it will run a series of tests to ensure that that cable can support bandwidths up to 40 gigabits per second. In this session, we do not have enough time to go through the hyper details, but all that information is available in the HDMI setup tool, and you can check out an upcoming video on our Cyanetic YouTube channel. But what you need to know is you can, when you're doing a job, you can know that all of the cables that you're using to connect this system is going to work properly. Because if you have one bad cable in your system, the whole system may not work. And we don't want you to blame the Denon or Marantz receiver. We also mentioned that the receiver also has those information screens where you can actually go into general under the menu and go to video information and you could check to make sure that the signal is being passed from your source device to your receiver and you can see what is being supported, such as Dolby Vision, HLG, 4K 120, variable refresh rate. So we have tools inside of our receivers that you can use to troubleshoot any issues that you're having with your receiver. Lastly, we spent a whole bunch of time talking about bandwidth, HDMI 2.1 and 8K60 and 4K 120 and 40 gigabits um, per second. But a lot of the benefits of HDMI 2.1 have nothing to do with higher bandwidth and higher frame rates. There are features to enhance your gaming experience, such as variable refresh rate, auto low latency mode, which puts your TV and your receiver into game mode automatically. There's quick media switching, 
um, which means when you switch from the menu to the game, you don't get a blank screen. And it's even what's called quick frame transport, which basically, as soon as your computer or game system draws the frame of video, it's sent off to your display. So you have this feature, quick frame transport, and someone else does not. You have the same game system, but his TV does not support this. Your computer or game system can send the video to your display first. So you see him before he sees you and you kill him. So it is actual a serious gaming advantage. There's also other stuff that we can talk about, such as eARC, the ability to take those sources that are built into your TV and send audio from those built-in TV sources to your receiver at quality that is just as good as a 4K Blu-ray player. There's Dynamic HDR, there's Dolby Vision, there's HDR 10 Plus. There's a lot of other features that have nothing to do with bandwidth and we support all of them. If you buy a Denon or Marantz receiver, they may only have one input that supports 40 gigabits per second um, on one, a receiver like maybe a 6700 or an SR8015. But all of the other inputs on that receiver supports the other HDMI 2.1 features, variable refresh rate, auto low latency mode, and everything else. And every single one of those inputs can be upscaled from HD or 4K to 8K. So as you can see, these receivers are feature packed. So while I would love to go through and talk in hyper detail about HDMI diagnostics or all the other cool features with HDMI 2.1, as well as all the cool surround sound modes and all of the cool custom integration features that are found in our Denon and Marantz AVRs, we just don't have enough time in this session. We do offer detailed um, seminars that are posted on our Cyanited YouTube channel. So if you're not a subscriber, please like and subscribe to our Cyanided YouTube training channel and we have all of the information about those other topics in hyper detail. So as you can see, I am really excited about the new Denon X1700 because when you look at all of the features you get for its price point, it is an exceptional deal. And all of the issues you've had with HDMI 2.1 we have you covered. And we even have solutions to expand the capability of the current receivers that you own or that you're selling to ensure that the customer and the user can utilize those receivers for years to come. Some really great products and accessories from Denon and Marantz. And we go out of our way to provide you with all of the great products you need to do your job. And I would like to introduce you to someone you should know. And this is Tom Ercolino. So Tom, what do you do? So I do a few things for Sound United. Uh, primarily, my main role is I support dealers and installers. Uh, I've been doing that for now for the last six years. Um, prior to that, I have a 10 years plus experience as an integrator myself. So I feel like I provide a benefit, you know, knowing what it's like to actually be installing and be in a basement or an attic and you know the TV's on another floor I, I absolutely know what that feels like okay so he feels your pain mm -hmm. and, and like I said he's he's definitely a resource here he's part of our custom install support team and actually they're not only here to help with this session I actually have him here trying to help me program <laughs> this building because we have a wealth of control systems throughout the building for all of the Denon and Marantz products and why not bring in the man? Now, what are some common things or common questions that you get on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, well, all re these receivers now have a lot of channels, more and more as we keep adding, so um, the configurations are gonna vary greatly. Um, you know, you may have zone two, zone three, you may not. You may have uh, two in-ceiling speakers for Atmos or DTSX, you may have four. Um, even the Voice of God speaker, setting that up is sometimes a little confusing so that's pretty much a common one that I get um, setting up arc uh, third-party control um, it varies but there's a handful of yeah multi-zone yeah. a lot of multi-zone questions and absolutely things like that. yeah right. yeah so so today um, I have Tom here because we want to answer some of your questions about our Denon and Marantz AVRs another question coming in from the audience here um, I've got a Denon X8500 or AV88805 from Marantz that I've installed. Uh, how do I get that uh, upgraded uh, to HDMI 2.1? Uh, yeah, it's pretty easy actually. You just go to our website, um, the Denon or Marantz website under products. You'll see that the HDMI board is available to purchase on the website. 
Once you do that, we'll ship you a box. You'd send the, uh, the, the unit back to our service center. They'll upgrade it for you and then send it back to you. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy. Yes, and depending on your region, um, you would just check your regional website. So whether you're in Europe, um, Asia, or the U.S., if you go to the um, Denon or the Marantz website, you'll get the information on how you can upgrade your flagship Denon and Marantz ABRs. Cool. Audience team, uh, just want to let you all know, uh, we are taking questions uh, in the live chat. Keep those questions coming. Uh, just type them in, uh, hit the uh, have a question, just ask. Uh, Again, we are playing Stump Phil and Stump Tom today. <laughs> so um, next question that has come in. Can I send multi-channel audio to another room uh, via the Zone 2 HDMI? Yes, you can. Uh, the HDMI Zone 2 output will support multi-channel out. You could even feed another receiver if you wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, in this, in this actual facility, we're actually doing that. We have a, um, a, an 8500 in this space, and then we're actually taking the Zone 2 from the 8500, and we're sending it to a second showroom to play maybe a sound bar. So instead of us having to have a Blu-ray player in each particular space and a kaleidoscape in each, each particular space, you can um, utilize one source in multiple zones, which is cool. Next questions come in. How many Bluetooth headphones or Bluetooth speakers uh, can I simultaneously connect to a Marantz or Denon on AV receiver? Uh, so you can only connect one at a time, but you can have, a, I think it's like six or seven profiles saved in the AVR, mm -hmm. but it will only transmit to one at a time. Yes. And, and, that's a, and, and using the Bluetooth headphones, you go, well, why would I want to use Bluetooth headphones um, and connect it to a receiver, an AVR? Well, there's a couple things you can do. The first thing is, think of, think of it as nighttime mode. You want to watch some content, and you do not want to disturb others. You can just put the headphones on, and you can switch off the sound on your receiver. The other way would be, say to someone in your family, that's a little hard of hearing. Mm -hmm. And instead of you cranking it and blowing everybody else out of the room, they can put on a pair of headphones, turn it up to where they can comfortably hear what's going on, and the rest of the room can actually be listening to the, 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 the movie in surround sound. So everybody else gets it in surround sound, and, and, uh, and the person that has a problem with hearing can actually just put the headphones on, and they can hear it as well. So there's lots of cool capabilities that you can do with the fact that you can utilize um, the Bluetooth transmitter right. that's in our receivers, because back in the days we used to only have Bluetooth receivers. Mm -hmm. Ted uh, has asked, is there a way to turn on uh, external amps based on the number of channels provided by a source? Hmm. Oh, so, so basically. Not uh, sure. So I think he's probably thinking about if he had a, a 12 volt trigger where, or something that if he was playing stereo, only the domain amp would turn on. And then when he went to surround sound, the other five amps would turn on. Um, probably what you'd have to do is that's more of a control system type approach that you would take. So if I had listened to music, like, um, like in my house, my PM10 turns on and only my PM10 that's connected to my AV8805. And then when I say watch Apple TV, both the, um, the PM10 and the seven channel Marantz will switch on. Well, so it'd probably be a control system thing. Plus right? we do have two trigger outputs which could be dedicated, like one trigger out could be for, you know, this these are two or three sources inputs mm -hmm. and then trigger oh. two could be for the other inputs or both. Okay. So he can so like phonograph, so if he had phonograph and CD it and FM, one. it'd be trigger one. Right. And if he had Blu-ray player or any kind one of multi-channel, one and two. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. See, come, oh. custom <laughs> install. So, so Ted's uh, example provided was, I'd like to turn on a two-channel amp uh, when uh, trying to play back a stereo CD, uh, okay. but then I want to turn on the three-channel amp uh, for the five-channel SACD. Yeah, so. Yeah, so I would program the triggers. In the menu, you could program the triggers. Um, per input. Mm -hmm. yeah, Great. Uh, so our, our last question, if there's no further questions coming in, our last questions come in, uh, are the three and one out uh, AK video switchers uh, for Dan and Morantz interchangeable? Ah, that's, a, that's a very good question. The first thing about these switches, you notice that they're labeled for the brand. So because a Marantz dealer wants a Marantz switcher and a Denon dealer wants a Denon switcher. Um, functionality wise, um, how they work is very similar. The main difference between the two is the codes, the commands that, that, um, that switch it from one, two, and three. 
So the Marantz one uses Marantz IR codes, and the Denon unit uses Denon IR codes. Mm -hmm. Now, you could switch these two, but you would lose the ability to utilize the remote, um, the, the remote that came with your receiver. Mm -hmm. You would have to use either a third-party control system, or you would have to use a remote that was included um, in the box. So that's one of the things um, about this guy. Uh, Samuel asks, uh, where can I purchase the HDMI box? Ah, so so the um, that is going to be something I'm going to have to you're going to have to talk to to, to Josh's team about hmm. or, or your rep about because these these will be available um, on the uh, the Denon and the Marantz website. There's two different models, one for the Denon like we mentioned, and one for the Marantz. So if you go on the site, you should see it under probably accessories. Yeah, or products. Or yeah. under products. Mm -hmm. Um, this is, if you try to go out and do a search for an 8K, um, 64K, 120, 3 in, 3 out switcher and see how much they are. They, um, the only one that I know of that, that, I, that I've seen is one by AV Pro. It's a great piece, but it costs a th over $1,000. So <laughs> if you look at the capabilities of, uh, that this box actually provides, the ability to expand the life or extend the life of your system, um, it is, an, it is it's going to be an amazing deal. And the way that you can simply control it is just another benefit. Since we are getting towards the end, there's a couple things we want to point out. We only had about an hour today to talk about all of the great um, um, technologies and features that are found on our Denon and Marantz receivers. To learn more about these products, check out, um, like and subscribe actually, to our Sound United training channel on YouTube. So go to YouTube, search Sound United Training, and you'll see tons and tons of more detailed webinars on everything from Odyssey to um, Wi-Fi setup to control to, to surround sound speaking configuration. So if you really want to dive in to Denon and Marantz products, that is a great, great place to go. Uh, question from Samuel that's come in today. Uh, is the HDMI box just for gamers or can it be used for Blu-ray players? That's a great question. The most of the, most, <clears throat> it is for any 4K 120 or 8K, 8K. 60 source. Uh, but right now, pretty much the only thing that is 8K <laughs> um, 60 or 4K 120 happens to be game systems. There's currently no um, announced um, a movie based Blu-ray or streaming boxes for movie content. So right now you see us talk a lot about gaming. But this is just passing the video signal. So if someone comes out with a crazy Apple 8K TV or an 8K Blu-ray, you will be all set and ready to go. Excellent. Uh, got a question coming in from, uh, uh, apologies in the pronunciation, Jatsina. Uh, can Denon and Marantz products uh, work together? Uh, if so, uh, how do we know what the best combination is? How do you combine uh, Denon and Marantz in an installation? That, that's a good question. Um, the, the, yes, they would because they will have different control um, commands, right. but things like Heos and things like that, they will work, they work well together. So, right. you, so say you wanted to have um, a Marantz in your, in your theater room and maybe a small NR series, um, a small uh, Denon in a, in a secondary space and you want to play music in both spaces, no problem. Um, the, how would you pick? It's a use case thing. Yeah, it's a little bit of um, your budget, your form factors and things like that. Have a small rack or small shelf, a Marantz NR piece may be the best solution for you. Mm -hmm. So it's more about the, the needs of you or the client that helps you determine and, and their budgets that's going to help you determine what's the best combination of products you should use. So, so Tom, thank mm. you for coming. Thanks, Phil. And, and hanging out and talking to us. He's got to go back and finish programming my theater, yeah. by the way. <laughs> and we'd like to thank all of you for attending um, this afternoon, se afternoon session. And hopefully we will see you tomorrow. So take care, and we will talk to you soon.